no client has ever developed a product in 48 hours, but you want us to develop a message to sell that product and explain it in a way that it'll encourage people to buy it, change behaviors and everything. And you want us to develop that message in 48 hours. Hello, intelligent beings of this marvelous planet. Welcome to the 42 Courses podcast and thank you for being here. Today, we are honored to speak to Derek Walker, who is the owner of advertising agency Brown and Browner. Derek has worked in advertising for nearly 20 years on an enormous amount of impressive clients and accounts. He's very active on Twitter and LinkedIn in the advertising community and is also currently working with the American Advertising Federation to help introduce advertising as a career choice for minority students. As Derek states, when he isn't rescuing small children and puppies, he's hard at work helping to educate people to the power and benefit of advertising. This podcast is jam-packed full of Derek's wisdom, realism, and important messages for the copywriting community. It's totally full of juicy goodness. So, welcome the fantastic Derek Walker. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm really good. I'm so grateful to speak to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You are a bit of a copywriter guru on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, can you can you explain to the listeners what what you what you get up to these days for clients? I'm old school. So we do for clients, we do whatever the client needs. I don't believe in specialization. You know, there there was a time when copywriters and art directors had to learn the client's business. Not that I know the business as well as the client, but I understand what's pertinent to me doing my job. So, you know, one day you're doing construction equipment, next day you're doing um, organic food. You know, it's, and that was the joy of being in copywriting early on. So when I opened the agency in 2009, I opened it under the old model. You know, I don't specialize in clients. I've done cars, but I wouldn't specialize in cars because that's how cars get crappy. We do work for whatever a client needs. Right now though, we are um, mainly focused on small and medium clients because I think the Mount Everest is to take a client that isn't known and grow them into a mega brand. You know, everybody's chasing, I want Procter & Gamble, I want Coke, I want Apple, I want Google, whatever, but they're already huge. What makes Wyden and Shiat so different is Shiat took this little computer company called Apple that nobody wanted because IBM was the big beast on the block. And look at what Shiat and others have done with that Apple. Look at what this little old, independent shop in Portland, Oregon did what name Wyden and Kennedy did with Nike. They didn't get Nike when Nike was big. They got Nike when Nike was nothing. Kids cried if their parents brought them Nikes when, when Wyden and Kennedy got it. You know, we, we, if, if my parents bought me a 1990, and Nikes used to be 1999, they were cheap. Um, I'm like, no, I want Chuck, I want the, the Chucks from Converse and you bought me Nike, oh, you know, and kids would give you a hard time. Rappers were rappers were wearing Puma and Adidas, and you brought me Nike. So think about what Wyden did to bring that. So when I opened the agency, I thought, you know what? I've worked on those brands that are established, but I've never been able to work on a brand where we go from ground zero or close to ground zero and grow it out. And I'm still chasing that. And that's what we're chasing. We um we do that. Okay, and uh, you, I've seen your video in the, in the forty two courses, the copywriting course, and and you speak very eloquently about the the power of listening. Is this is this mm -hmm. the most important or the most powerful tool for a for a copywriter? It's a tie. I think linking listening and being curious. So I guess being curious leads you to be listen to listen. Or does listening lead you to be curious? I don't know which one comes first, but you need both of those. Um, if you're not willing to learn how, you know, the massive amount of information that copywriters have to consume, it's, it's, it's hard to explain the system. Think about it. We've got to read all this information about a client's product or service. Then we have to think about their customer. 
or their potential customer. We have to understand them. And then we have to take what the client's saying and translate it into a message that that customer wants to hear, or it's beneficial to the customer. I don't know what we would call that. It's not not just translating, but it's it's manipulating and discern. It's a whole bunch of other kind of terms, but it starts with being curious. If you are not curious, then you don't dig deep enough. But if you don't listen, you don't hear the real the real notes that are in there. Um, there's that Ogilvy quote, I think, isn't it? Who says that the, the, the great copywriters are the ones that are interested in, in, in everything or the broadest range of things. Yeah, who, which one of my friends said this? He goes, copywriters, the keepers of the most, the, the, the keepers of, the, of useless knowledge until it's not useless, you know? <laughs> it's like, you're sitting there and you're going, why am I learning about this stuff? And then later, it's something pops up and you go, oh, I know about this. Did you know the whale shark is, you know? And it's like, oh. So yeah, but it's really amazing to consider in a world that we, we, we think um, people are short attention span, how much knowledge and, and information copywriters are just soaking in. And, I know this is about copywriting, but let me also say good art directors do the exact same thing because they're in the same meetings and they're there. So I think to your question, to answer your question, being curious and listening are great. Then follow that with collaboration. I need that art director. I need whatever partner we have because you need somebody that's going to go, you may have missed this. You know, um, some people believe the strategist serves that purpose. I, I think sort of, but not like a, an art director can for a copywriter because I'm focused on what's said. The art director is focused on the, what's, what's presented, the visual part of it. And that takes a load off of the copywriter. So there's some, I think Bern Bach was brilliant in teaming up copywriters and art directors, and he mm -hmm. may not get the full credit for it. But yeah, I think, so you got curious and listening and then collaborate. When, when you are, let's say you're in the middle of a, a big thing for a client, a big creative mm -hmm. thing, where, where do you go for inspiration? Okay, you've spoken, yeah, you, you have to know the product, you have to know the people, you have to know the customers, but on top of that or at the side of that for inspiration do you do you walk the city do you take photographs of copy that you see around or images Where, where's your inspiration coming from sometimes we really need to get into the i like to see how the client's product lives in the world um i like people watching mm -hmm. so if you can why wouldn't i go to a a client store or restaurant or company or factory or whatever. Um, Britain has, a, I don't know if Europe has a version of Undercover Boss. Yeah, you've we, seen, we know it. You've seen, the, you've seen the American version, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lesson in marketing there that the individual running this company has to go undercover to learn about his company or her company. And when they get out there, they find out how little they know. So why wouldn't, as a, as a lowly copywriter, part of my inspiration is to actually sit and watch and listen, you know? Um, I'm not a park kind of person, so I'm not out in nature. And walking in Columbia, South Carolina is, is not an option because Oh, it's hot here, extremely hot. Um, but I get out and my people watch. Um, I think we have to, copywriters have to learn to be distracted. You know, you give me an assignment, you give a copywriter an assignment, you give a creative assignment and sitting there and trying to go, I'm gonna write this 
perfect line right now. No, creative is like, ah, uh, I'm not, you know, creative is like, I'm not coming out. Now, if you put that person, you can't make me do anything. And creative is, I think creative is alive. I think of it as a creature. So, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to go open the, open the door and let creative out. And creative is like, did you ask me? You know, you sort of have to coax it out. And I think that that's why we ended up with ping pong tables, pool tables, all the distractions that people lament about now is because you're sitting there and you're doing something else and your brain works a different kind of way. That part of your brain that's working on the problem is still working, but it's working without you in the way. So you're playing, you're doing that's whatever nice. you're sitting yeah. and you're sitting there. That's why we have to be distracted. So you're sitting there and you're just doing whatever, listening to the music. You can even be watching a movie. And you ever, you know, it's people go, I was in the shower and it hit me. Well, you were in the shower, you weren't thinking. I got to write this line for copy. I wasn't, you know, you're, you're taking a shower, you're driving. And it hits you because you're concentrated on driving. So the brain, that part of your brain is actually working. And we have, unfortunately, we have individuals that run agencies and creative departments who are not creative and don't understand how that process works. So we are forcing people to sit at a desk for six or seven hours a day. And you're, by God, you're gonna push out that creative line and you're gonna push it out on time. And creative is going, that, that little creative being, you just got his arms folded going, no, no, not today, you're not. And so you get the work that's not horrible, but it's not the right work. Mm -hmm. It's acceptable and it's the bare minimum or it's a little above the bare minimum. But that brilliant idea was like, I'm not coming out. You can't make me. These conditions are not what I, you know. So to your point, I, I'll throw on some gospel. I'll throw on some gospel music uh -huh. because in my house, my mom, when she was cleaning the house or when she was working on something, she'd put on gospel music and she just would sing the song she knew and do a task. So I'm sitting there and I'm on, I'm, I'm put, put on some music or R&B and I'm gone. I'm singing the song and then all of a sudden I go, oh, that's the line. Yeah. I wish, I wish we could say, okay, write 50 lines and you get it right. I think that is the worst copywriting advice on the planet. For me, it's I have two dogs, so when I'm walking, mm -hmm. it's when all the ideas come, I have to I have to write them in my phone immediately because I lose them. And like, oh yeah. my God, what was that thing? Anyway, so uh, to to your point just then, Derek, uh, what do you think is one of the some of the big mistakes that copywriters can make or fall into the trap of? First of all, it's um ego i give i give no no cares i'm trying not to curse i give no cares for your ego i don't need to know how smart you are how vast your vocabulary is how intelligent you are we not, you're not writing to show me that you're writing to communicate so if the target audience isn't talking like that. Why are you putting 15 cent words where a, a five or a six cent word could work and would be more real and, you know, that's the big one. Uh -huh. I gotta show you I'm a great American, I'm a great writer. Mm -hmm. No, if you can communicate, what's the Einstein quote about genius is being able to explain the complicated simple. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, think about it. Most uh, too many copywriters have reversed that. Genius is taking in the simple and making it complicated. Ogilvy says, doesn't he? That it's I don't I, I'm not interested if it's clever. I'm only interested if it yeah. sells. Yeah, and what sells is what sells is the human. I mean, think about oh, I don't know if you were in the states, but where's the beef? It's such a simple lie that doesn't say. Our hamburgers are more beef than <laughs> your than everybody else's hamburger. That's, where's the beef? It's not even a complete sentence. It's the, it's the language of the street. 
Yeah. Um, and oh, I like, like what you just said. I'm going to show you two brands that figured that out. Three, Federal Express, International House of Pancake, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. The street always called Federal Express FedEx, International House of Pancakes IHOP and Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. It took all three of those brands nearly a decade, a minimum of a decade to figure out, to go with the name <laughs> that the street had for them. And you're sitting there going, really? How much money did you pay to have that designed? You know, it's a, you know there are people on the street that you owe money to. You paid some ad agency to do this. But th that's where a copywriter, um, that's where I think copywriters get it wrong. I, I borrow from whatever you say as a client. I'm listening to the client. Um, I don't need to reinvent it. I need to find out what you know. Yeah. And sometimes the client doesn't know what they know because they're so close to the product or the service. And um, the other, I guess ego and arrogance go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, the arrogance is I have learned everything I need to learn. I, I don't need to learn anything else. Oh, well, you know, um, no other copywriter or writer is as good as I am. So I don't need to study anybody else's writing. <laughs> um, I could get, you know, I think it's, it's not the technical part of it. It's not time management. It's not um, organizational skills because you can't organize copywriting and you can't manage the time. And I know that's gonna drive some people who run agencies crazy, but here's what we do not admit to. How long does it take for you to come up with an idea? How much time do you spend on it? If we were making widgets, the only time I'm working on the widget is when I'm sitting at my desk working on the widget. Because we bill by the hour, we're saying bill every hour or every increment of an hour where you're working on the idea. But to your point, when you're walking your dog, how much time did you, did you spend thinking about that idea that comes to you? You don't know because you weren't running a clock on it and you didn't know that part of your brain was working. So how do you organize that? How do you measure that? You can't. What we also can't do is though, we can't tell anybody that that part is unmeasurable. So what happens is we've created copywriters who are stressing and going crazy because they know they've worked more hours, more time, but they don't know how much time because that portion of your brain that's working is working without your knowledge. So, so how do you square that circle with, with your agency, Brown and Browner? How, how do you, how do you build a client? Do you, is it a I build home? them by the job. Uh -huh. I don't build them by the hour. Mm -hmm. And I don't make people keep up. I don't, I don't track hours. You know, it's like, how do you know you're getting the most? Look, if you think, if you know the, the scope of the work, then first of all, I think telling creatives the budget and the time. And I'm, when I say budget, I'm talking about the time because time is a budget. When you tell them the budget, they're keeping that clock in their head. We only have 140 hours to work on this. You know, that, that ticker started, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm working. So I don't believe you tell them that. You tell them, look, how long do you think you need to, to complete this task? You know, um, we, we bring in everybody that's going to work on the job and we ask them, what's this going to take? 
and then we we come up with a figure. We're moving more towards um, performance pay. So there's a flat fee, but then there's a percentage tied to any increase. And it's an agreed upon increase between the client and the agency. And it's historically, it's based on historical sales or performances. So if your growth from last quarter, for this quarter of last year and the year before was 8%, it averaged 8%. Then historically, you can project that this growth is going to be 8%. Now, if we run a camp, if we do the work in this quarter, for this quarter, and the growth is above 8%, then we get a percentage of that, that growth. I love this way. Clients want to to have skin in the game it's you know we got skin in the game but what it does is it frees up my people not to have to worry about time some people work better in the morning that's me some folks work better in the afternoon but our business day is what time to what time so i'm saying here's the deadline the deadline is two weeks out mm -hmm. i don't care how you get it get to the deadline <laughs> you know what's what's a, what's amazing to me is we set that deadline and then we want to tell people how to get there what if you let the creative just get there and if the creative comes back to you later and goes i work the copywriter comes back to you and says i worked too hard on this okay then then what we what now we've learned something mm -hmm. see you, you're still getting your check as a copywriter yeah i'm not docking your pay mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I'm not yeah. billing the client anymore. What I'm saying is now we know the next time around that flat fee needs to be a little higher. Uh -huh. do, do you think though that there's something in it when people talk about, you know, creatives need deadlines? Because as that deadline looms, it, it all start that that it all starts firing. Creatives need constraints, period. I, uh, I'm not going to pretend that a copywriter doesn't need, oh no, that brief is, <laughs> you know what? I curse about briefs, but you need all those constraints in the brief. No, you cannot curse in the ad. No, you can show no nudity, violence, and sex, and none of that. I need you to have it done by now. I win. My problem is out of respect, for the creatives. I don't think anyone should be setting that deadline without the creative's input. Now the creatives go, okay, I'm writing a radio spot. I need three months. And I'm looking at them going, no. Give me more realistic goal. You know, and I use radio because radio is a strictly copywriter thing. And so, okay, I, I can do that in two, two and a half weeks. Okay. Because and uh, it, it's incumbent on me as the agency owner to go back to the client and say, the client goes, well, why is it going to take them two and a half weeks? How long did it take you to develop your product? Oh, it took us two years, three years, five years. You know, no, no client has ever developed a product in 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. But you want us to develop a message to sell that product and explain it in a way that it'll encourage people to buy it, change behaviors and everything. And you want us to develop that message in 48 hours. No, <laughs> you know, but but what part of that is on me as a leader to explain this. Now I bring my creators along so that they can learn this because when they leave me, they need to be able to defend why it takes as long but, but do, you, do you get clients i mean uh, you know this is every copywriter listening to this will understand that what you've just been explaining but would you get clients that will go okay if you don't do it in 48 hours i'm going elsewhere fine yeah bye yeah okay um if you walked into a, a, any five-star restaurant and said sit down and say they make a souffle Souffles take time. You haven't ordered ahead. You hadn't called or made a re you made a reservation, but you didn't tell them you wanted the souffle. Souffle takes an hour and a half, two hours. I don't know. I'm just throwing that number out. out that work that number out. So you sit down and you go, "I want a souffle, but I need to be out of here in 30 minutes." What does the restaurant tell you? 
No. There is power in us saying no, and it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy, mm -hmm. but there's power in saying no because we get ourselves in trouble when we say yes to things we know. See, if you say, the client says, I need that in 48 hours, then nothing can ever take longer than 48 hours with that mm -hmm. client. Now you're stuck. So right. stuff that really and truly needs more than 48 hours, you are now going to run yourself ragged over. Sure, you need the money, but all money ain't good money. You're, you're miserable. You're, you're, your people are miserable. They're overworked and they're stressed. For, for what? You know? But, but yeah, as, a, what? But as, a cop, as a copywriter, you know, your manager or the CEO of the agency or whatever, they're not thinking like this. They're thinking, we need, we need to take this business, win this business while they're small, or win this first win, the low-hanging fruit, then we get the big stuff later. That okay. later never comes. <laughs> Let's be totally honest. How you, how you allow people to treat you at the beginning of a relationship is how you are going to be treated forever. Mm -hmm. So let's not even pretend. It ain't, ain't low-hanging and easy. You can, um, my dad's a drill instructor, was a drill instructor in the army. And he used to say, it's always easier to go from hard to eat to soft, but it's never easy to go from soft to hard. Mm -hmm. So if I start off hard and I explain this to clients, I'm not for you if you think we're McDonald's. If you think you walk in here and get this in two and three minutes, no. And clients try. And I say, well, why do you need this in 48 hours? Because of blah, 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 blah. I'm like, really? Think about this now. <laughs> you know, and I'm not being funny or aggressive with it. I'm just saying, I understand what you're trying to do, but really. So, and, and you have to, there are some questions to be asked. So if we give you subpar work and it really, it's just to fill a void and you get it out there and you piss people off. What have you accomplished? It's better not to say anything than to say the wrong thing. As copywriters and art directors and creatives, we've lost that part of our business. You know, people want to be healed of cancer instantly, but what does the doctor tell you? You know, you, you there's no instant cure. Yeah. So, yeah, I get that. And, and I think it's that compromising that has gotten us into trouble where deadlines are so tight and some agencies only have one copywriter for five art directors. That poor copywriter is overworked. Um, or if they even have a copywriter on staff. So we have got to learn to have some standards and to hold our standards. It's not easy, you're gonna lose money. You know what? I have repeatedly gone to the wall about certain things with clients. Mm -hmm. I've won some, I've lost some. But we have never starved and I've never laid anyone off and we hadn't gone broke. Good for you. Part of that, part of that fear that these leaders have is an imaginary fear. Mm -hmm. See, I'm testing the water. The clients are testing the water to see how far they can push us. Mm -hmm. Our, excuse my language, but our dumbasses don't realize we're being tested. We think we're being mandated too. So we, oh, we must do this to get the business. As a client, and just, I'm gonna ask you this one. As a client, if you knew you could walk in and bully somebody and get what you wanted, at a cheaper rate, faster. How much respect do you have for that person? Yeah, it's a race to the bottom, isn't it? Yeah. How much, so how, why are they ever going to pay you your, your rate if they know they, they can bully you around? If they can beat you down, then I can beat you down on your rate. I want copywriters to get paid what they are worth but I want them to work under the best conditions so that they can, they can grow their careers.
And part of that is having a standard that goes, you know what, you're not slapping me around. And I've, yeah. had one cli- I've had one client actually where that's been a problem. I had to stop the meeting and tell him, you will not talk to my people like that. And he was worth a lot more money to us than I would care to admit. But I'm like, look, you can't do this. And I have to say it in front of my people. They need to understand I got their back. Mm-hmm. And they also need to know there's a standard. Never in your life do you take this abuse from any human being. And in the exchange, I could see that the client was testing us. And he was a bully. Mm-hmm. But he came to understand, I'm not the one you're going to bully. And he stayed with us for another year or so. And bless your heart, if you leave after a year, I got my money. My people did the work they needed to do. But you didn't come in here and talk to them any kind of way. Copywriters have got to defend the craft as much as their bosses. If you know that it's going to take you a little bit of time to do this, don't let somebody else set that deadline and come back and tell you, well, it shouldn't take that long. No. How, how long does it take you to, to make a cake? <laughs> you know, yeah, you can make a cake in a microwave, but really, does anybody want to eat a cake that comes out of a microwave? Oh, the microwave people are going to come after me on that one. <laughs> but I mean, you know, um, it's so funny that we don't rush things. I live in this, I live in, living in the, U- the U.S., we're, we're a car country. I take my car in to get an oil change. It doesn't come out in 15 minutes. It's two or three hours to get an oil change. If I do the oil change myself, it's 20 minutes. But it's 102 degrees outside and there's no shade and my car is hot. I don't want to crawl up under the car to do this. So I take that inconvenience of those, of those two or three hours. Do I go into that car place and yell and scream that it's taking two or three hours when I know it can be 20 minutes? No. But the only people that are supposed to take that abuse on time are copywriters and art directors, Mm -hmm. ad folk. It's it's unrealistic. It's it's, to your point, it's a race to the bottom. You know, I practice this as a copywriter. Mm -hmm. Honest to God, I'd sit at agencies and get the job and go, what's this? We need three radio spots and you want them in a week? I politely go and sit down next across from my creative director and go, have you looked at the deadline? It's like, what deadline? No, you know, because think about it. Creative directors don't always are so busy at some of these agencies. They're seeing so many briefs coming by. They're just signing the briefs. And and I'm like, but we as copywriters don't understand that they may not have gone over all the details and realized that. So I'll go in there and I'll tell you, they're giving me a week to write three 60 second spots and three 30 second spots and three 10 second spots. Did you approve this? Because you do know I'm going to be working, you know, I I don't know if I can do this. The the, the look on your creative director's faces, it generally tells you that they didn't realize the scope of what they had signed. And then, you know, then that's incumbent on the creative director to call up the people who submitted the brief and go, that that deadline will not be met. Mm-hmm. That's unreasonable. If the brief doesn't have the right information and you realize that because you've read the brief and you're trying to make this work and you're, you're realizing something's missing, it's incumbent on you to contact the person that wrote the brief as a copywriter. It's incumbent on you to go to your supervisor as a copywriter and go, this is missing something. Just like if you are doing this and you discover something totally new and cool that isn't in the brief that the client didn't say, but as you were doing the research into the brand, you go, oh, this is a a cool idea and it may make them more money. Do you sit on that as a copywriter or do you go to everybody else on the team and go, I think we might have we might be going down the wrong path. Here's why. Now, if the team vetoes you, cool, go back and do what you're, you're assigned to do. But, but also hold on to the idea that whatever you discovered may actually need to be out there. 
I think we think copywriting is just writing and it isn't, it's thinking. And it's gotta be thinking first on all aspects. But, but Derek, you're, 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 you're of a certain age, you're a confident guy, you had a confidence building childhood that we spoke about before, before we started. And, you know, what, what would you say to young copywriters who are just getting into it and they've got these crazy pressured deadlines on them? Can they really stand up to their creative director and say, no, this is, I, I can't do it in this time? They, they have to say, they have to start questioning the deadline. Mm -hmm. or they'll be slaving away forever. You know, if, if you don't come to me and tell me it's a problem, how do I know as a boss that it's a problem? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I might get it. You may make me do it. But once you tell your boss that this deadline is kind of, is too short. Now, when the boss sees you are, are frazzled and hopefully, and this is a question of whether or not you want to stay at that agency. If that, if that doing that job takes a toll on you physically and mentally, and your boss doesn't give a damn, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. They will work you to death. Mm -hmm. And we have to come to that conclusion. All bosses aren't, aren't great bosses, but the really good ones, and I'm just saying good, I'm not even talking about great. The good ones go, let me look at that damn deadline again. Can I get them more days? You know, maybe three or four, but it's more days. But do they know to get you more days if you've never said anything? Part of this is, yes, you're young and you want to make a lot of money and you want to do this, but guess what? To make a lot of money, you've got to be, you can't be a sheep. Mm -hmm. The sheep don't get paid well. So, so what, what would be your... If, if you had a billboard in every town for like copywriters, young copywriters out there, what would be your message on there? I know I'm putting an instant deadline on you. But... No, respect the craft. Respect the craft. Nice. Uh -huh. And in, in respecting the craft, you learn about the craft. You understand what was done in the past. You see the future. You study about what the future of the craft is. Copywriting is changing. We don't do as much print as we used to do. But I think that's a lie. I think social media is print. Uh -huh. Unless you're on Clubhouse um, or or any of the voiceovers, but mm -hmm. a voice voice um, platforms. Mm -hmm. But think about it. I cheat on Twitter, and and anybody that is hearing this, follow me on Twitter and notice. I write headlines on Twitter. I open. I I consciously think about the opening line of a tweet mm -hmm. because I need it to stop you, grab you, and pull you in. Mm -hmm. That's a damn headline. Yeah. So you got to study the craft. See, what, what works in print works in social media. Mm -hmm. What works in radio and TV, and let me tell you, I, I fear the day that good radio copywriters discover social media. They have been working for years in the radio medium, really good radio writers with no visual and just sound effects and a voice. Yeah. Imagine what they can do with some of our social media platforms. When long copywriters, and I'm talking about really good long copywriters, discover blogging. You know, so that's why you have to respect the craft. You have to learn, you know, it's not new versus old. It's taking what's old and making it new again and using it to win. So they respect the craft. They study it. They, but they also understand their responsibility as a writer. Ask questions. Be present in the meeting. If somebody says, do you want to attend the meeting and you really don't want to go, guess what? You've already lost the battle on when that deadline is set. Yeah. You know, be in the meetings. Yeah, it's hard to work. Learn the inside workings of team. So I'm not going to my account service people just to complain. 
I go to the account service people and go, guess what I discovered? You know, and the account service, what, what account service person is unhappy that someone comes to them with something cool about the, the client? You know, yeah. that, 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 so we're talking about building relationships, but what, what we've done is we've put everybody in a silo. So the copywriters over there writing words <laughs> when they should be questioning and listening and, 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 and talking. I sit my account, I, I let my account service people sit in on, a, on radio sessions when they don't, don't need to be there. I let the strategists sit in on radio sessions and TV pr production and all of that, because you got to understand what a copywriter and an art director really do. You know, they're sitting on set on TV or radio and they're actively participating in the creation of the work. They're just not writing it or they yeah. should be. All of that, even as a junior, if you're not toned, tuned into to, to starting those practices. It's hard to do that when you're 20, 10, 5, 10, 15 years down the road. Yeah. You are, you know, mm -hmm. if you never say no, you'll always be saying yes. And hey, that's biblical. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's the, I disagree. A friend of mine put out a blog, the most powerful word in, in, in business is yes. And I, I, I sent him an email going, no, the most powerful word in, in business is no. Yeah. You know, and I don't explain my no's. And if you can learn that, that's important. If you say no to something, don't attach a reason. No, but. No, but is a negotiation. Mm -hmm. If you don't intend to negotiate on your no, just no. Okay. Derek, I could talk to you for the whole weekend, but can I just ask you two quick fire questions to, sure. to wrap it up? Because I'm taking up so much of your time. If advertising, left field questions, okay, quick fire. If advertising okay. were a food, what kind of food is advertising? Paella. <laughs> okay. I mean, think about it, it's a whole mixture of different things that shouldn't work together. <laughs> You know, with enough heat. <laughs> it's yellow it's like something. the sun. Yeah, it comes out and it's like, whoa. So you're going to throw chicken in there with shrimp and, and, and mussels and this is going to be good. And, and, oh, so you're going to put peas in there, rice. And this is a nightmare. And you're going to cook cook it all. Wait a minute, you're, you're not going to cook. You're going to cook the rice with all this and make it crunchy. Yeah, so it's paella. Okay, nice it's one. A big mess. And final question. I ask everybody this, but I have never been so excited to ask somebody, and it's you. So there's two options for you. You have to choose to fight between a horse-sized duck or a duck-sized uh, or a hundred duck-sized horses. Which do you choose to fight and why? Ducks are vicious animals. I'm gonna <laughs> go with the horses that are duck-sized. Because I figure after the first 20 or 30, the rest will get the message. <laughs> but if you've ever faced a duck, a regular duck side, no, those are mean animals. Yeah, horses, yeah. I mean, come on, the little duck sized horses, you, you by the time you wade through, all of them are going to want to fight. I'm going to take the horse sized ducks. Very good. Duck sized Very good. horses. Yeah. Oh. Derek, it's been such a joy to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank You're you. A, gent, a real gent. Oh, yes. Go out and enjoy Berlin, sir. A real rallying cry to all copywriters from Derek Walker there. Just to let you know that Derek is one of the many thought leaders, along with some legends of advertising, in our new course on copywriting. Go to 42courses.com and take a look inside the copywriting course to learn how to write words that sell. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time. <laughs>